Hey guys, welcome back to this lecture. Pro implement PromiScale for remote storage. In this lecture, we will see how we can use PromiScale for the remote storage endpoint and how it helps us. So, we will implement the PromiScale the same way we are doing for other components like in Docker container. And now, because our Docker containers are increasing in count, so let us use Docker Compose to orchestrate them. Okay, so Docker Compose, if people are not aware of then docker compose is a tool with which you can manage or uh, launch or destroy multiple containers at a time so you just need to write a docker compose yaml file will where you will define all the containers and resources and then you just need to run a simple command to launch all the containers or to destroy all the containers so let us quickly start with the demo now so the very first thing we will do we will create a file structure where we will have all the definitions of containers and your docker compose and then uh, we will launch the stack here okay so let us first thing we will do is let us create a directory for our stack okay let us go inside this directory now first thing we need is a docker compose.yml file now let me bring the yml file here uh, you will be able to find this yml file in the a resources tab okay which will be attached to your lecture now let me paste it here so this is the entire docker compose file let me show you and explain you what is this so let me cat it okay so in this yaml file what i have done i have defined the components which i need for my stack okay like i need two networks here one frontier the other one is back tier okay i need to mount the volumes from the container for that i've designed this section okay in this section we are saying these are the mount points which will be created in my local host okay for these containers so what happens with this if you remember in our last lectures or in previous lectures when we were mounting the path of container to host we were specifying a particular path okay like mnt prometheus and then xyz but in this case what will happen the, the name i am giving here this name will be used to create a directory inside where lib docker volume okay inside that path a directory will be created for my mount point and that mount point will be used by my container okay so these four mount points i have created here volumes i have created, uh, defined here Both, uh, this one is for prometheus where i'll keep the config data like Prometheus ML, WebML, like that. This is the TSDB data primary. So what this mount point I have created for persisting the TSDB data. That is the local TSDB data of Prometheus where it is it stores the uh, samples. Okay. The third one I'll use it for PostgreSQL, or I'll say the Promiscale DB. Okay. So Promiscale is nothing but a tool which provides you the scalable storage for your Prometheus solutions. Okay. On the backend, it basically uses TimeScale DB and PostgreSQL. So the benefits and the features that comes with PostgreSQL, uh, you get from this PromScale as well. So this is the one mount point I've created for that. And the next one is for Alert Manager, where I'll keep the configuration of Alert Manager. Okay, networks I've created two. Now, if I want my all the containers to communicate with each other using the local host name, host name of the container, so what I can do, I can bring them onto the same network okay this way they will be able to uh, communicate with each other using the host name of the container okay now in the next section services i'll define the containers each and every container which i want to run the very first container i'm using is prometheus okay i've given it as a name primary because in the upcoming lectures when we will implement the high availability we will be using two prometheus running in parallel so in that case i'll create the other container with prometheus hyphen secondary name okay now in the build we define okay the image will be built from where from the docker file for which path is this okay now the next is host name the host name of the container these are the volumes i'm mounting for this container as i said etc prometheus directory will be mounted on this directory on host slash prometheus directory inside container will be mounted on this directory on host port number which will be exposed for this container what will be the network on which this container will attest and restart policy always okay the same way we have timescale db for timescale db i have defined the 
I will define the Docker file inside uh, this directory. So we will create that file structure uh, in few minutes. Host name I have given same volume environment variable. So here we need the environment variable in Postgres password. Okay, where we need to pass the database password to connect to the DB. This is the port. 5432 port will be exposed for this container network pack tier and restart policy always okay now the next is prom scale prom scale basically this container will be like a connector which will connect your prometheus with the uh with your db time scale db which is running in the backend okay and this time scale db is running on postgres you can see it now the build will happen from this path so a docker file will be available in prom scale directory on this work current working directory host name here i said depends on time scale db means this container depends on this container and this will start uh, created once it will be up okay now the port which will be exposed for it network restart policy and links here i have linked time scale db so that it can communicate with each other okay so by linking you can say you can uh, call the other container using the container name not the host name okay so th this is why we uh, create the links the next one is alert manager primary so again the reason for keeping the primary as in in the high availability stack we'll create one more alert manager will be running in parallel so we will keep that name as alert manager secondary image have used the pre-built image from bitnami host name i have given here this is a port number this is a volume mount so to uh, mount the configuration in my local host this is network restart policy and these are the commands where i'm saying okay this is the config file and this is the web config file which will be used by my alert manager okay now the next is container exporter which we have created in uh, last few lectures image i have used from prom this is the host name Th these are the volume mounts this is the port number and this is a network and restart policy okay so this was about the docker compose file now it's time we create the other components as well because we need the docker file for all those uh, containers for which we will build the image on runtime okay so let us start with the very first that is uh, docker file for prometheus so i'll keep it outside only let me uh, copy it quickly so don't worry you'll be able to find all these uh, docker file docker compose yaml file in the resource section in this lecture so you can download it from there okay so we are, we are done with the docker file for prometheus now it's time we create a docker file for prom scale so i'll create a directory first and inside that directory we will create a docker file because no two docker files can coexist with the same name right okay now it's time A docker file oh, let us quickly okay so this is the image i'm using and these are the uh, arguments which we are passing with the process okay so we are saying this is the db password this is the port on which it will run this is the db name this is the db host db ssl mode allow and here we are saying i want to run this particular a container or this process in the high availability mode this way it will be more uh, durable and scalable okay so this is the port i want to expose 9201 let us save it now the next one we will create is uh, for time scale db okay it is getting stuck okay directory is created let us go inside it now okay now create a docker file here now let me bring the content here okay and this is the command i'm passing okay so i'm done with my folder structure and files here just wait let me move this time scale db outside
okay let i think i've created the directory inside prom sql db let me create it here okay now let me copy the docker file of time sql db here in the time sql db directory okay now let me remove it from here okay now this is the folder structure we have one image we a docker file we have for prom scale one docker file for time scale db this is for prometheus and this is the docker compose yaml file now it's time we run the docker compose yaml okay so we can run the same using docker compose up command with the hyphen d means it will run in the uh, distinct way so all the containers will be isolated to each other and they will run in the back background let us hit enter here okay all the containers are up because i have already downloaded their images in my host okay now let's see the container status here all the containers are up and running fine now the question will rise okay we have created the containers but and we have mounted the volumes but from where these are reading the configuration okay so as i said when we mount the volume using the way we have defined in the docker compose it creates a directory inside the where lib docker volumes if you enter a list here you can see these mount points are created here now let us go inside that prometheus let's say config okay inside this it created this last underscore data directory i'm now listed here so you can see that is uh, mounted here this is the content from the container and these are the third key prometheus ml and web config file is the same which we created earlier okay so i have already copied it here and i'm using them as it is now the same way the configuration is coming from this path okay so now the container is up now it's time we validate whether uh, my containers or i will say the remote storage extension already or is working fine or not okay so let us do one thing uh, let us get the ip of this instance and run the prometheus console or browse the prometheus console okay let us pass the password here okay so my prometheus is up let it load let me see the configuration whether it has uh, taken the latest configuration or not one thing i missed here is this is the remote write and remote read configuration which you will have to add to read to make your prometheus understand okay this is the remote storage available to me and now from these remote storage endpoints i'll be uh, reading the data or i will be writing the data too okay so what is what we give here in the url is basically the endpoint of prom scale okay which is running here that is the uh, 9201 port this one okay so what you what you are saying here okay my endpoint will be so my prometheus will be contacting to prom scale on 9201 port and prom scale then in the backend will connect to the time scale db to store and read the data okay so here i'm saying this is the right api on this particular prom scale endpoint which provides you the capability to write to write data to backend postgresql okay in the same way for remote read uh, this is the api slash read on this endpoint so okay now we can see configuration is uh, visible here now let us do one thing let us go to prometheus let's search for the matrix with the name having remote string okay so here you can see let us take the uh, first example only prometheus remote storage shard let us execute it okay that's great so here we can see okay there is one storage is available here where we have four number of shards url is this prom scale 92101 right okay remote name is this so this is the remote storage name okay and it is coming from the jo job uh, prometheus one same way if you want to see other metrics let me show you a few others let's say if you want to check how much data is already stored in your remote storage okay so you can uh, use this one prometheus remote storage bytes total you will execute it 
and here you can see this is this number of bytes has already been written to the uh, your prom scale okay the same way if you want to see mm, let me bring in storage samples total if you want to see that was in bytes this is the sample total number of samples which are already present in your remote storage so this is the one okay so this is how we can integrate our prometheus to the remote storage now people you need to understand what i have done here for the demo i have created or i have deployed the prom scale in containers okay now if i talk about the availability if you are running the same setup in your environment that is all the components are running in single container in this ec2 machine then your ec2 machine is a bottleneck here okay so if your ec2 machine goes into an outage everything will be wiped out right so what you need to do the first thing you will take the backup of this ap ec2 machine or snapshot of this particular uh, machine at a regular interval second thing you need to implement your promiscuous solution in some remote storage in some different machine let's say or in different data center so wherever you want you can deploy it there so your prometheus and your remote storage will be distinctive on different platforms okay so if prometheus machine or prometheus server goes down your remote storage will be up and running okay now talking about this container if my container goes away this prom scale time scale db container okay and my data will be all out so what you will do first thing we will do is which we have already done the first thing we will persist the data of this container in the local host okay via volume mount which we have already done okay now the second thing docker compose is really a good thing so because if in any case your solution corrupts or any issue occurs you can uh, directly use the docker compose and uh, create all the containers at once so it it takes only seconds to uh, bring up the entire environment okay and the data which is already stored in the local host local host uh, using the volume mounts is already there so your container will start reading the data from the same checkpoint where it uh, stopped okay so that was about it now the next thing to uh, remove the dependency from the ec2 machine what you can do you can bring or you can put this machine into an auto scaling group so if your machine goes down any time a new machine will come up from the ami you mentioned and from the for the ami ami standpoint what you will do you will take the regular ami or let's say every 12 hour ami of this ec2 instance and you will update that ami inside your az template or launch template whatever you are using okay so that way what will happen you will whenever your new uh, server will come up from the auto scaling so it will take the latest ami in the consideration and it will bring all the data that was there already so this is how you can uh, overcome some of the limitations okay so this was one solution which we have deployed there are others as well like you can use uh, amp that is amazon managed prometheus you can use time stream okay and uh, uh, there are few others as well which we have seen in the previous lecture and you can you will be able to find their implementation as well very easily over the internet so i wish you all the luck for that and uh, we will uh, take a step forward for the next lecture now so i'll see you in the next lecture thank you